Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, April 7th, 2021. And here are our top stories. We'll take a look at 2021 themes for defined contribution retirement plans and are managed accounts more efficient than target date funds. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Beth Halberstadt. She is the senior partner and defined contribution investment leader for Aon Investments. Beth, pleasure to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you, Jeffrey. Really excited to be here today. Yeah, it's great to talk to you and the folks at Aon. And 2020 was a, a horrific year for so many reasons. And it's really informed a lot of how we are doing business in 2021. And I know you and the team at Aon have been very busy kind of looking at the key themes for this year for defined contribution, 401k, 403b, 457b plans. What are some of those key themes? Yeah. Yeah, 2020 was a wild ride for sure. You know, generally speaking, in the world of retirement, things move slowly, right? We're focused on the long term. Uh, but with this new legislation, the SECURE Act, and with COVID, it's really created this en environment for change. So as we're looking into 2021, you know, obviously we have three, three months under our belt, right? A quarter done. Um, there's a few key themes that we think are going to continue to drive meaningful change in DC plans post-COVID, right? We expect to see growth in investment outsourcing. So think OCIO solutions. Plan sponsors and committees are going to be even more focused and interested on shifting the work and uh, the liability of selecting investment managers uh, to their advisors. We saw this momentum after the financial crises and anticipate the same trending. There's been a lot of focus on ESG or responsible investing, and there's a big appetite by investors to integrate their views into their retirement programs. But how to in integrate those tenants of a, uh, into a DC plan as a prudent fiduciary really is the question. Um, and it's been quite a roller coaster. So, for starters, the final rule was passed uh, by the DOL at the end of last year, and it clearly states that fiduciaries can't simply screen and select an investment because it's good for the environment. And then just more recently in the past month, the DOL just announced uh, a new non-enforcement policy of that final rule. So tricky landscape for fiduciaries, more to come. Pooled employer plans or PEPs is the newest innovation in DC plans hottest topic this year, for sure. Uh, multiple employer plans and one large plan or program isn't new. It's been around for a while, but with the passage of SECURE, you can now pool unaffiliated employers into one plan, which we're now calling PEPs. PEPs allow a plan sponsor to outsource much of the work and decision-making to a third party. So think things like selecting a record keeper or trustee, picking the investment options, conducting a plan audit, uh, and oversight of those vendors can now all be outsourced. So this really opens up the pooled plan platform and employer choices in a really significant way. Um, and Aon really believes it's gonna dramatically change the DC landscape over the next 10 years, whether it be for small plans or large plans alike. Litigation in ERISA is on a significant rise. Many of the lawsuits are focused on fees. So as we think about that, we believe managed accounts are gonna get much greater scrutiny. The the question here is that we need to really solve for is, you know, are participants truly engaged enough in their managed accounts to create a customized portfolio, personalized at a price point that's really going to drive better outcomes than they could get in the target date fund that's currently offered in their plan. So stay tuned there. And then in the latter half of 2021, we anticipate that retirement income solutions are going to get a tailwind as a result of the SECURE Act and the new disclosure requirements. So the new rule requires that plan sponsors uh, actually provide participants with a projected retirement income calculation based on their current account balance. So putting that front and center with the employee, we think is gonna generate greater demand for retirement income solutions and uh, in plans going forward. So definitely a lot of great opportunities and momentums here to drive better plan design uh, and, and, uh, and, and a true evolution of the DC plan in a more meaningful way. 
Yeah, well, it's certainly going to make those committee meetings, I'm sure, very interesting. <laughs> Beth, how, you know, do you think the events of 2020 will put into overdrive this decision, if you're not offering one today, to, to think about very hard about retirement benefits and offering a retirement plan? So I think with the result of COVID, uh, and you think of those types of organizations that don't offer a retirement benefit plan today, most often it's going to be the small employer. And as we know, many small employers are just struggling to stay afloat, and they've got real near-term business stressors that they need to focus on. And retirement always feels like that, something you can focus on in the future and seems so far away. So unfortunately, I don't think it's going to drive um, as, as much as we had hoped uh, that the result of, of the PEP launch uh, would. But that being said, uh, as of the end of February, we've got 52 organizations out there that have registered for a PEP. And those organizations, if they really ramp up um, their distribution and their focus on their outreach uh, of employers that don't offer retirement plans today, a PEP solution's extremely compelling. Low cost, very little work for a small employer, um, outsourcing the risk to those who are expert, extremely compelling. So their success in reaching the underserved is really gonna be a critical driver of adopting and, and launching of new plans. And Beth, you know, Aon, you're, you're focused on the investments in defined contribution plans, but your organization does has a lot of different lines of business, whether it's healthcare, life insurance, other, other aspects of the business. Benefits are so important when attracting and retaining employees, right? So being able to offer a retirement plan, I think would be a windfall for a smaller employer who up to this point had not had the opportunity to do that. And they might be able to attract some employees or potential employees that they might not have in the past. Absolutely. You know, the ability to offer a real turnkey solution um, and at high quality. So when we think about it, the benefits of PEP can bring, right? It's going to bring high quality investments at a low cost that typically is only available to an institutional, you know, large plan sponsors, $100 million and greater, is now available to um, the small employer who has got no assets to start with. So, you know, in the past, they've, you know, uh, you think of nonprofits, right? They don't expect, nonprofit employees don't expect that there's a retirement plan available, PEPs are going to allow for that in a much more meaningful way. So we definitely think it's going to change the landscape in that regard in a much po more positive way. Yeah. And, and it could really tilt the balance in terms of retirement coverage in this country, something that is desperately needed. Well, Beth, we're going to have to leave it there. Really appreciate you coming on the program uh, this morning. And when we come back, we'll talk to Beth's colleague, William Ryan, Bill Ryan. He'll be talking about the comparison between managed accounts and target date funds. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN.
the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit Repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. I'm now joined by William Ryan, Bill Ryan. He is a partner and also the head of North American DC Multi-Asset Solutions for Aon. Bill, great to see you as always. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, I, we had a great conversation with your colleague Beth uh, in segment one about some of the hottest trends in DC in 2021. Uh, really informative. And I wanted to turn our attention, if we could, to managed accounts and and are managed accounts actually outperforming or can they outperform dc target date fund solutions so before we kind of get into the performance and retirement outcomes why all the talk why all the buzz about managed accounts are we seeing a, a real push here in marketing yeah i appreciate that and um it's it's a hot topic with our clients i think while we think the the fees currently can erode performance or are eroding uh, long-term performance, I want to take a step back for a moment and reframe the conversation because what I think is lost in the current narrative around our paper is the fact that Aon actually believes that professionally managed solutions like managed accounts and targeted funds can improve participant outcomes. What we're observing actually is it's the quintessential story of the tortoise and the hare. What do I mean by that? So if we look back only five years ago, Vanguard had their targeted funds priced at close to 20 basis points. And you could have plans accessing close to five basis points today. That fee differential makes the, the performance or the net performance stand out. Um, if we think about target date funds as the slow and steady tortoise, then managed accounts are the fast and agile hare. Uh, and the known issue and why this topic is coming to a head is the rapid growth of target date funds the past five years. Um, they've pulled away in, in size. They've also been able to pull away from pricing, as I mentioned, which was probably price parity in 2016. So now that we know that managed accounts are, are the hair, they should actually start to truly act like them going forward and try to pull ahead. And I think the last thing I kind of frame on that is think about it as Moore's law. We're comfortable with technology. It should get faster and cheaper uh, every two years. And if that's true, then managed accounts need to, to take that path and be truly disruptive and place target day funds. But until that happens, the audience that we're, that's here with us today uh, they're going to have to be willing to have an uncomfortable conversation around, you know, what's going on with their managed accounts and record keepers today to bring price back in parity to allow disruption to truly happen. Thanks, Bill. And, and up until this point, are you seeing adoption of these solutions? I mean, target day funds have, you know, I think they're getting somewhere around 80 percent of all new contributions in retirement plans. But are you see, seeing more and more clients at least consider and or adopt these solutions? It's a fair question. I think what's taken is a given that everyone has them. We're seeing only about 50% of plans offer managed accounts where 90% or 95% of plans have a target date fund. So the adoption isn't as high, but I think we take it for granted that everyone has it. And due to the recent research, we're actually seeing some take a pause and maybe step back for an interim period of time. Now, Bill, a lot is being made in the DC space and defined contribution space, whether it's 401k, 403b, governmental 47 about personalization, customization. It means getting data about the individual participant and being able to, or individual employee and being able to customize a solution for them. But let me ask you, does this really translate into successful retirement outcomes? Or at least are you seeing that today? I guess in theory it should, but is it in practice reality? Yeah, the um, reality is, is yes for some extent, right? So I think a minute ago we talked about adoption. So half the plan is still DIYers. 
if DIYers use managed accounts, they're going to be in a better place than, than where they are today. But the differential is, does the managed account get to the target date fund? And this is the most challenging conversations we're having with clients. Because at the moment, what's happening is we've taken for granted as an industry that personalization means that it's the nirvana, it's the unicorn. So if it's personalized, it has to be good. But what we haven't challenged is what personalization means. A target date fund is technically personalized for the average participant by any provider. A managed account is trying to be personalized for the individual. They're the ones that are actually defining personalization. They're also defining what uh, inputs or material to actually change that personalization. So if we, if we dig into that a little bit more, then we think about it. If they're both a target date fund provider and a managed account provider have both decided what's the best average starting point, then they have to decide what's meaningful to change. And it's going to be the fiduciaries who decide, hey, what happens? But to your point about individual engagement, that's the biggest headwind that we're actually noticing. So if you look at our paper, I think it's on the front page, the gross of fee managed account and the target date funds are equally as efficient. So they're both as efficient as you can ever be in the plan. But when you net out fees, that's where this, the, despair, uh, the disparate results are occurring. So the two forces ahead of us that we have to navigate is one, what we've been observing in data without improvements and nudges and communications for managed accounts to really pull in participants because roughly 10% of participants who pay for the service are being engaged. So that means 90% are getting basically the base case glide path. So what does that mean for the, uh, the plan fiduciary? And then now that we have this information and we know that that's the base participants, what can we do to actually make a change? So these two things need to be tested and monitored by fiduciaries to figure out what they've provided and what's being bought is doing what they think it was supposed to. And you, you bring up fees and that this has always been or has been for at least the last decade, as long as I can remember, fees have been very important. Uh, lots of litigation, lots of lots of RFPs that I know you and the team at Aon have done. I've certainly done a few in my time. Um, but do the fees right now really justify and get to where the, are they are they really at a point where they really get the participant where they need to be and are the return streams there to make it a good cost benefit for the payment yeah it's so it's it's starting point it, it's not there if the managed account is soliciting people away from the target date fund it is there if they're doing their job and engaging with the diyers to improve their outcomes that that's where we are today it can be there that the target date funds and managed accounts get closer if the fees come closer together. We are seeing some providers come to market with target or managed accounts at 15 basis points versus the legacy 50. That creates the differential a lot closer. And then for 15 basis points, is there other residual benefits, savings, education, planning that manifest that are actually incrementally better than just a standalone target date fund? Yeah. Last question for you, Bill. Retirement income is. You know, I mean, that is a top topic. I know you and your colleague, uh, Beth, uh, mentioned this in, in, the, in the paper, that being a big topic. Where does retirement income sit? Does it also sit in managed accounts? Is it a part of a managed account solution or is it part of a target date fund? Any, any thoughts there? Both. It's a, it's a really great question. At Aon, we're actually, we spent a lot of time thinking about the savings phase. And now we're talking about the spending phase. How do you draw a paycheck from your retirement plan? And in tier one, as we've historically thought about it as consultants, you have the professionally managed solutions, targeted funds or managed accounts, which can serve a dual purpose for the spending phase of retirement income. Managed accounts have the greatest opportunity to disrupt in the advice standpoint from retirement income. That if we can, the disparate needs of, do you need a QLAC? Do you not? Do you need spending today or tomorrow? The managed accounts can do that hand over fist more than a target date fund, but we have to make sure that the price and the service are actually there. And I don't think today's solutions are pushing the envelope far enough. Yeah. Well, Bill, it's a pleasure speaking with you. And I really want to thank you and your colleague, Beth, for stopping by the program. We look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, then drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, so much more all in one place, check out today's edition of our newsletter, The Morning Pulse, and of course, our website. We're back again tomorrow, so until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Put it
Are you being audited and do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.